a good time. Put a smile on your face, yeah. Can't be camping. Elation Radio. Mm-hmm. Even brighten your day. Yeah. God squad, bruh. That life you living, man, you can't afford that. Nah. Yeah. Uh. Could have saved any soul, but you saved me. Yeah. My life's a game to the devil, so he played me. Life for the world so pricey. I hope you got the racks. But that money ain't gon' say you when them demons come attack. You can't afford that. They want your life and not your paper. Nope. But when Jesus put the bill, say see you later to them haters. Bye. That's real talk. I get in the whip, say a prayer, and then I feel lost. Yeah. Had a talk with the Lord for real, y'all. And he told me demons feel so. Can't hang them. with the name of Jesus. So why would I complain? Stump the devil in my Adidas. Got Jesus on my brain, homie, get on my level, cause yeah. I'm on the winning yeah. team, but yeah. the Lord loves yeah. us, John yeah. 3, 16, yeah. don't yeah. start no yeah. stuff, yeah. I don't care how yeah. it seems, yeah. we'll get the last yeah. laugh yeah. up in heaven yeah. with the king, my yeah. heart was in peace, I'm so glad that Jesus filled the hole, Whoa. y'all my God is Whoa. in control, say it's so, no God doctor show, can okay, you bump me at a price, I can't afford that, Lord you saved my life, so I ain't going back, been in there at night I can't afford that, I can't afford that look, look, look. You pay the cost to be the boss I can't afford that, hell's eternal loss I can't afford that, dying on the cross I can't afford that, I can't afford that Nah, nah no bank account full of dollars, no mouth full of grill, no house on the beach, no sign on the wheel, no polo on my back, no diamond on my wrist, no Lambo outside, I push a 06, the fame and the riches, the thugs and the switches, involved with the word, but the world was my mistress, no blunts in my hand, no hand mixed with coke, I'm on my Christ swag, my friend is the ghost, no more hanging late, Papa was a rolling stone. I'm at the altar, the kingdom now is my home. Evil never sleep, tomorrow never promise. I can't look back now, can't afford it to be honest. No more backsliding, I'm in the front seat. Elevated, now I praise him to a crump beat. He paid for my sins, a post-dated check. Ordain a minister, a post-dated check. Okay, you bought me at a price. I can't afford that. Lord, you saved my life. So I ain't going back. Been in there at night. I can't afford that. I can't afford that. Look, look, look. You pay the cost to be the boss. I can't afford that. Hell's eternal loss. I can't afford that, dying on the cross. I can't afford that, I can't afford that. Nah. 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 Okay, he laid it out, that paid the cost. Uh-huh. For half this world to say didn't walk. Uh-huh. For half this world to say didn't breathe on these dry bones when we straight from wrong. Uh-huh. To hell with these enemy spirits. Uh-huh. My job is to bring up two children. Uh-huh. As long as they call and hold on Jehovah, I'm all about my father's business. Yeah. I can't afford your company. Your wicked tongue stop corrupting me. Uh-huh. I'm on cloud nine and not heaven bound. All shall go down with no hope around. Uh-huh. I'm praying and hoping you listen. Uh-huh. Good faith through a repetition. Lies. I came as a vessel, my strength is his armor. I can't afford to be missing. Through vision, he sent me a mission, obeying his every intention. Lies. We're walking with greatness, you live, Jonah, you end up with belly with fishes. Uh-huh. I can't afford a physician, Lies. I can't afford ammunition. Lies. The hope of my tower, I look to the mountains to seek whatever is missing. I can't afford your energy, uh-huh. I can't afford you hating me. Uh-huh. I know Christ had to deal with Pharisees, but don't tempt the God to dwell in me. Lies. I can't afford no stress in me, been rock bottom with no air to be, so I can't afford, Lies. just can't afford, Lies. not praise the God for the air I okay, breathe. you bought me at a price. I can't afford that, Lord, you saved my life, so I ain't going back, been in there at night, I can't afford that, I can't afford that, look, 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 you pay the cost to be the boss, I can't afford that, hell's eternal law, I can't afford that, dying on the cross, I can't afford that, I can't afford that, nah, nah.
I can't afford that. Welcome back, everyone. This is Minister Cedric of Relentless Pursuit on Nation Radio. Wow. Today is October the 15th, 2021. Wow, I can't believe it. It's already October. I know uh, it has been a while, it seems, since we've done a podcast, since we've talked about anything at all. But I want to first let everybody know, you know, this has been one of those times. September the 9th, believe it or not, wow, I'm a grandfather now. And I tell you, I have had such a great time uh, realizing what it's going to be and how wonderful it is. I tell you, so I found something I love, I embraced it, and I am chasing this. This is just awesome because um, his name is Braxton. He's been introduced to the world again as of September the 9th, and I got to spend time with him. It is so weird because all of a sudden now I'm FaceTiming my daughter just to check on her and my, my grandson, so it's awesome. And I can't tell you the feeling. Because I don't think I'm old enough to be a grandfather, but hey, I am. I, uh, I guess I gotta uh, quit repenting for lying about my age. I keep saying I'm 35. Well, I'm a little bit older than that now, and so I wanted to say um, thank you to to everybody for your prayers. Uh, I've had many things going on, um, and it's been a wild ride this last month. Um, but everything I'm finding out, and I tell you, it has just made my prayer life that much stronger, and which which it, it, it's it's just been awesome. So, uh, Sister Kim has been praying for me, so I say thank you, Sister Kim, and uh, you know I really appreciate it. Just love you to death because you have always been there. You're awesome. Um, so it's been really good. And now that I shared all the good news with you, we got even more good news to share with you. I have my 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 good friend, my partner in crime, on with me tonight, uh, uh, Jason. Uh, uh, and I just want to make sure you're on with me tonight, Jason. Yes, sir. I'm here. <clears throat> can you hear me? Oh, I can hear you fine, brother. How you doing tonight? Good. I'm doing good, oh, Grandpa. Man, it's, it's... How are you doing? <laughs> Watch yourself now. Watch yourself. But I'm doing good. I'm doing real good. I mean, embracing that role. I'm telling you, I'm embracing that role. That's awesome. I used to laugh at uh, mothers and, and different grandfathers, you know, and they would get all excited over children and grandchildren. I'm like, wow. But I tell you, it, it's awesome. So I'm going to make sure I send all my friends pics, of course. I don't want to put them all over the web because it's not my place. I don't think everybody needs to know. But um, the most important people will know. But, you know, it, it brought me to a place, man. It has made my prayer life stronger. And and it kind of lines up with what we, what we wanted to talk a little bit about tonight. Um, but it has made my prayer life stronger. And, 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 and you know, uh, as we read in Scripture, uh, we find that, that, that you know, Jesus actually gave his disciples uh, instructions regarding prayer, right? You know, and, and, and I think it's important for us as Christians to know and understand, and not just know and understand them, but to follow these instructions, right? And so um, I was reading in Matthew today. I actually was reading Matthew 6, uh, 15, uh, 5 through 15, but but the scripture I wanted to, to, to read out, you know, for us to start from, if you don't mind, Jason, was 6 and 6. And, and what Matthew 6 and 6 simply says is, But thou, when thou prayest, enter into thy closet, and when thou hast shut thy door, pray to thy Father which is in secret, and thy Father which seeth in secret shall reward thee openly. Man, uh, you know, <laughs> That's kind of like praying for a grandchild or like praying for anything. You know, um, w- w- when I read that in Matthew, I started, to, you know, pray in secret. And, and, and it kind of made me, it, it made me think about a few things, but but I, I started thinking about that. And I said, pray in secret. Because you know how they say what you do in the dark will always come to the light, right? Well, your blessings, it says that God will reward you openly, Right? 
so everybody will know that. So I wanted to talk a little bit about about uh, praying, praying the Lord's way uh, uh, tonight, uh, uh, Jason. Is that, is, is that all right with you tonight, man? Oh yeah, I, I think the the discussion of prayer is a is a good one because I think so many people, um, especially Christians, get confused about what prayer really is. And some of the models we see, like especially in church, uh, religious leaders, they sometimes can skew that model. So when you really just go back to the Word and you see what uh, not just God is ordained, but what Christ has actually laid out because he actually spoke directly to this and about this, it does actually make you look at what we're doing. So I think this is a good, good thing to talk about. Something I'm excited about because I always tell people when you when you talk about this this Christian walk, I tell you everybody it's like a relationship, and every good relationship requires communication. That's talking and listening, and prayer is our way of communicating with Christ. And if we're not doing that, how effective can we be in building that relationship? So I love this topic, and I love the fact we get a chance to um, rap about it a little bit. Awesome! That, that, that's great because, because again, it's kind of a it's kind of a bit to read. I don't mind reading it, but it's Matthew six five to fifteen, and 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 you know basically what it says. Uh, you know, uh, gosh, that's a it's a lot for me to read. I'll go ahead and read it though, um, because I, I think it's important for us to 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 focus. And focus on what 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 we're told, okay? You know, focus on what Jesus gave the disciples, because a lot of times, you know, prayer. I, I mean, like like uh, um, before before you actually really took um, church, I guess I should say church seriously. But before you really got engaged in church, I mean, were you taught about prayer by your parents? Who taught you to pray? Your friends? Did you learn? From the church? Did you just copy what other what you heard pastors say? I mean, what, what did you know I about think, prayer, Jason? I'll, I'll tell you that's that's. Uh, I think this will lead to the confusion that we have, and especially in the Christian community, no one ever sat down and taught me about prayer. You know, of course, we read the scriptures. Mm. You know about you know the Lord's prayer, and we'll go through that a little bit today. Um, but most of my idea of prayer really came from just watching people do it and emulating what they're doing without the full understanding of what it really is and what it really means. Um, and that was always yeah. a gap in my life, you know, and I'll tell you because of that gap, I always, you know, whenever I get a chance to talk to anybody, you know, I thought prayer was this complex, complicated thing that requires, you know, studying and, and, and reading and, and all yeah. this, these different things that you have to do to be effective in your prayer, right? And, you know, it was uh-huh. kind of it was kind of overwhelming, right? You know, because I say my prayers and, you know, and, and but, you know, with the thought of, like, this thing being such a big process, you know, it was one of those things that I'm like, well, this is just my little prayer. I guess I'll go ahead and say it. And it became more of a, it, just, I mean, it became more of a something I did because I, I was a Christian because I did not have that full understanding of what prayer really is. Mm, you know, and, and it's funny you said it like that because because I used to think you had to have these you really couldn't pray effectively unless you had this deep connection with God and and you had these these you, you know you remember the movie Moses and the Ten Commandments those old movies you had to be bold and you had to you know and I realized yeah okay that's all fake right right <clears throat> but but that takes us to another place but before i get too deep i'm gonna go ahead and read the uh matthew 6 5 through 15 and again the lord's prayer it says and when thou prayest thou shalt not be as the hypocrites are for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and in the corners of the streets that they may be seen of men verily i say unto you they have their reward Verse 6, but thou, when thou prayest, enter into thy closet, and when thou hast shut thy door, pray to thy father, which is in secret, and thy father, father which seeth in secret, shall reward thee openly. Seven, verse 7 says, but when ye pray, use not vain repetitions as the heathen do, for they think that they shall be heard 
for their much speaking. Verse 8, but not ye therefore like unto them. For your father knoweth what things ye have need of before ye, before ye ask him. After this manner, therefore, pray ye, our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever. Amen. Verse 14 says, for if ye... Go ahead. I was just saying amen. 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 And so verse 14 says, For if ye forgive me in their trespass, they will also forgive you. But if ye forgive not me in their trespasses, neither will your father forgive your trespasses. I, that, that's a lot. But, but I mean, I, I, I think we have the, the, the blueprint for how we are to pray. And, and you know, if you go back to verse, um, if, if I'm sorry, if you go back to verse five, uh, it says, "Don't pray like the hypocrites," right? And 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 the important thing, what's the important? I, I mean, I, and, and that's help me understand the important thing about not praying like the hypocrites. You know, the, the, the scripture says it, it, it basically points out that they want to be seen by others. Why is that a problem? Well, I, I think the biggest thing that we always come come across, and I think it's not just with prayer, if it's just anything spiritual, spiritual gifts, you know, uh, those types, is why are we doing this? Are we doing it for the glory of God? Or are we doing it for the glory of man? And what those hypocrites did, very eloquent speakers, out there saying these long, drawn-out, complex prayers, and they weren't doing it to in, in worship or in glorification of God. They were doing it That's right. because now they're looking like, man, he's a great prayer. And to this day, we 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 have that situation where, you know, when you when you no, get to we, people and they, and they're praying and and they're doing these things, it's 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 are they doing it for the glory of God? I'll t- I'll tell you uh, when I work with the students and I watch them worship. And, you know, I always watch and see what's going on in their worship. And you can always tell who they're giving the glory to because when they're out there singing and they're, and they're, and they're, and they're, and they're demonstrating that, my ne- the next thing I look at is where do their eyes go? You know, when they get done with the demonstration, do they look up to heaven and say, hey, God, this is for you? Or do they look around, there's, look around to see who's looking at them? And, and I think that's the key mm. point, you know, and when they talk about hypocrites, am I saying that prayer? And at the end of the prayer, I'm looking around to see who's looking at me and who's, who's like, man, you know, who did I touch with that prayer? Or am I just still looking at God and say, you are the object, you know, who I'm praying to, you know? So when they, when you know, those hypocrites, what they do is they, they, they pray and they do all these things, but the reality is just to show, right? It's just, it's just for mm. that glory they get from the men and women watching them not for the glory of God himself. See, and, and, and that's, that's the big deal. And I think that's, a, that's one of the things when we, when, when we start learning, or when we start really studying the scriptures and we start learning um, the Lord's Prayer. I, I mean, I, I learned, I remember as far back as maybe six or seven years old, uh, my two brothers and I, my mom would have us to pray. And that's what we prayed. Um, every night before we went to bed. That's what we prayed. And as you break down that, you know, as the passages that we read, like you said, Jason, you know, it's not about being seen. You know, prayer is a is a is a is a is a very I believe it's a very intimate moment that we have with God. Because again, we often say, and you've heard me say it a lot, you know, prayer is your conversation it's your communication with God we don't want to waste that time that should be I mean that that is precious time and we shouldn't be out uh, uh one of the examples you gave me earlier Jason um was method uh acting you know we, we don't and, and and my thing is as the scripture says uh um the scripture says that if you do that then you have your reward shouldn't be not 
be wanting to be seen by men, but it should be your focus should be you want to be seen or or heard by God. You know, you want a communication with God. And so when you have your reward, you know, I think that, that going back to the scriptures, when it says that, uh, and, and I was in, I think it was a, um, um, a, I forget the exact verse I was on. I think it was verse, I think it was still in five. I'm, I'm thumbing through my page. Um, yeah, verse five. When he, when he says at the end of verse five, you will have your reward. That reward comes from the Father. I would much rather be rewarded by the Father and not by man. Am I right? Because cause the things of God are eternal, right? Right, right, right. And those, and those, and those, those uh, admiration you get from man that, that's fleeting. Because one minute, and we've all experienced this, you're the best friend. You, you're, you're the best thing since sliced bread. The next minute, you know, you're a pariah that they can't even. No one wants to talk to, right? And and I and I think you know with that. I, I think, you know, we have to be careful. And, and to another point, you know, and this is kind of as we talk about it, you know, we got to think about how we're presenting ourselves when when we are an ambassador for Christ. So if I'm out there and I'm praying and, and in my prayer, it's really for the glory of man that that like me, a young Christian looking at that, I look at prayer as something different. You know, I look at prayer like, you know, I think that w- that's part of the reason why my attitude toward prayer got shaked because I see these men praying these fervent prayers and I'm thinking to myself like, man, I'm nowhere like that. So how can I do anything like that? Right. In reality, uh-huh. that, that wasn't the case in point, you know, to your, to your say, it's just an intimate conversation with God. And, you know, if we spend our time, you know, making prayer complicated, not just in our explanation, but also in our practice, then what type of, you know, what type of teaching are we really doing, right? You know, uh, yeah. and, and I think, you know, when we talk about, you know, uh, you know, praying alone and, and making sure that when you do pray, you're, you know, I think it goes more than just that the glory of man and, 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 that, and that hypocritical doing it for, you know, for men to see you. But I think there's a part that we have to think about, yeah. like, how am I teaching someone looking at me, right? You know, how am I teaching – the people that 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 are that are looking at those young Christians, and we're not even just talking about kids. You know, I just came to Christ. I'm a I'm a I'm a 30 year old person. You know, I just came to Christ. How am I showing them the, that prayer life? How am I showing them how to relate to God? And by making it complicated and complex, you know, how are they going to take that and try to build that relationship that they're looking for? Absolutely, and 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 and, and, and that, that that's the, that's the thing, you know. Like, like like when the scripture says uh, 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 not to be like the heathen, right? Our prayer shouldn't be like that. You know, we, we, we learned that uh, uh, when you go back and you look into the book uh, of, of First Kings, um, you know, you find that they were praying to Baal, right? Right. That from morning to noon, they're calling out. You, you know, we we ought not pray like that. You know, the the staples. And that's another thing. When you read into this text, you got to understand that the staples for um, for the way they live, right? Uh, uh, the Jewish community back then, as you get into the verses that we read, you find that that they had three things that that I like to call the staples of their their lifestyle, and that was giving, that was prayer, and then that was fasting, right? And, and that's what 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 their the Jewish life was was based on it was built upon that right and so when you look at at that versus doing what what uh, what the scripture says the heathen uh, uh, what the way they prayed you know they called on Baal for hours and hours right but you know the the, the Bible tells us to keep your prayers simple and meaningful you know what I'm saying. And, right. and 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 right. and it's not about about being grandiose like we were talking about. It's not about being grandiose. It, it, I mean, it's, it clearly states in Acts nineteen thirty four. You know, it, it talks about it. You know what? Your prayers should have a meaning, and it shouldn't. It, your prayers don't have to be all flowery. Now I get it. There are some people, like when I hear, let's say, T D Jakes pray. 
his vernacular, if you just listen to his vocabulary, you're like, mm, you're over the top for me, bro. Who are you talking to? Right? That, but some of us may say that, but that doesn't mean that for him that may be a simple prayer. When I listen to, let's say, a, um, a um, uh, what's his name down in Houston there, Jason? Uh, Osteen. Uh, Joe Osteen. His prayers are simple. Father, he talks like, I imagine he talks. I, I, I think when I hear T.D. Jakes pray, he prays the way he preaches, the way he talks. But, but I think what we, we've got to understand is that connection that we have with God. We have to practice um, 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 living this. This ain't about acting. That's the problem I think we have in the church a lot of times is we are acting. You know what I mean? And, and then, and I'm going to tell you, I'm going to tell you, like, um, um, <laughs> how am I going to put this? Well, going back to the heathen, like 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 they would, like as I was saying in in First Kings, they 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 cried out, "Baal, hear us, hear us!" from from for hours and hours. You know, why are you continuing to call in the name of God? Is this just a a a a, a vain repetition? Are you just repeating the same thing over and over and over? Have you heard somebody pray like that, Jason? And and and. and I- and the reason I'm I'm asking you, what, what what do you think? Well, what does the scripture? Not what you think. What does the scripture basically say about that, though? So, so that and that's the question I want to pose to you because I've heard I've heard those repetition prayer. I've heard I've heard people say, "Hey, I pray every day to God for this. I pray every day to God for that." And I've heard people say, "Scripture says pray uh, consistently or what's it incessantly, right?" with no breaks and continue mm-hmm. to pray. And I've seen people take that scripture and say, I need to keep praying for, keep, keep on praying. And, and the question I ask is, you know, um, and, and as we study for prayer, it does, I, I like you're saying it's set it and forget it. Right. And, and mm-hmm. so for the people out there and in me too, how do I balance those two? Right. Because I heard a scripture say, pray uh, without, without ceasing, can continuously pray. You know, and 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 people continue to pray, and they pray for the same thing over and over again. But then it also, you know, like just in the study, you know, it, it says, you know, like I said, set it and forget it. Pray it once and and keep it moving. You know, so how does one look at that and and, and really find, you know, what that balance is? Well, see, okay, okay, I'm glad you, I'm glad you asked that. I'm glad you asked that. Yeah, see, I, I, I think that um, as we read through, I'm, I'm, I'm going to go back to the scripture here because my thought is this right here. When you say vain repetitions, when you're just repeating something, right, you're just saying it. Like, like again, the example I used was First Kings 18 um, when the priests were, were, were praying to Baal. And and they just kept saying it over and over, Baal, hear us, hear us. And they just kept saying it over and over for hours, right? They, 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 you know, I think that it's, I think it's like this: when you do that, you just say the same thing over and over and over again, right? I th- I think that of course God hears you, right? I think of course He hears you, and and I don't think it goes against God, but I think that in in reference to 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 what we were re- reading here is. Vain repetitions, and, and and what I mean by that is, I think prayer. When you call on God, it should be a um, there should be a deep desire in you. There's something connected to what you're praying for, as in uh, a want, uh, a want and a desire. Basically, when I look at the, a want, I want a new car, and I get the new car. And I'll go back. I just look at a kid, a little kid. He wants this toy. And he may seem like he really, really wants a toy, and then you buy the toy for him, and a day or two later, he don't play with it no more, right? To me, that's what vain repetitions are. When, when, you, when you're calling out for something, but it really has no real connection with you, right? I think that, I think that when we read the scripture, um, um, when, when we get into the scripture, it's saying that, look, look, you can pray for 30 seconds, Right, you can pray your prayer for thirty seconds and know that this was you laid it out. You, you, the desires of your heart were laid out. Or you can pray for 
35 minutes and say the same thing over and over again, our heartfelt prayer is just show, to show people that you are on your knees and you are praying and, and, and you are calling on the name of God. It's, it's vanity. You know, and, 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 and I think that, that that's what we have to be careful of, right? I mean, even when you read it, I mean, Jesus doesn't well, you have to say this part of the, 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 the prayer. You can do portions of the prayer. You can even sometimes pray the same thing over and over again, right? But as long as you're not just espousing empty words, empty words meaning words with no meaning, you know what I'm saying? And, and I think that's where the – uh, I don't want people to get confused on that. Just that you can pray the same prayer over and over again, this heartfelt prayer. But I, I, I would caution people against this. One, your words just becoming empty words, right? Um, your words, you're just saying them to impress others. Because, again, the, uh, in the Scripture, it says, well, I, I assure you, you have your reward. That means that all the blessing you're getting from God about that prayer is already there. You got it. You ain't getting nothing else, right? You can pray all you want. But I also think that that sometimes when we keep basically begging for the same thing over and over and over again, we do it out of worry. It's not really a heartfelt prayer. We say, God, God, did you hear me tug it out of God? You, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, and I think uh, and I does, think does, you know does, that's that the sense? key piece. Yeah, and I think that's the key piece. It's 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 to everything. It's not what you do; it's the why you're doing it. Right. It's like that kid. Right. Hey, it's Monday. You know what, son? We're going to go to the we're going to we're going to go to the uh, amusement park this Saturday. You know, we're going to go have fun and go to the amusement park. Kid gets excited next day. I don't know if daddy forgot about it. I don't know if daddy remembers. Let me ask him. Daddy, daddy, hmm. you know, we still going to go to the park this Saturday. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we, we got it, son. Yeah. You know, we're going to make it happen. All right. Tuesday come around. I uh, just want need to be sure. I'm really excited about going to the park, but I got to be really sure that's yeah. going to happen. Daddy, Daddy, we're going to go to the park this Saturday? Yeah, yeah, so I, mean, I told you, I told you, man, we're going to go. We're going to make it happen. You know, now, after a couple of days of that, I'm going to be honest, as a parent, I'm like, didn't I tell you already? Why are we going through that? And I think when we <laughs> when we pray like that, especially in that situation where I'm not quite sure I'm going to get this, I'm not quite sure that this is something that he, God's going to bless me with. Let me go ahead and ask him again, right? Or I'm not sure God's going to bless me in the timing that I want it to happen. Let me make sure I ask him yeah. again, you know. So maybe if I ask him a couple of times, he'll see how important it is to me, and that's going to move him to maybe deliver that blessing. And, and I think when, when we're praying like that, I think that's where we have to look at our own hearts. It's like, why am I repeating this prayer? Right? Am I repeating this prayer because it, at the end of the day, it's a lack of faith. Either a lack of faith, God's not going to deliver, or a lack of faith, God's not going to deliver in a, in the time that you feel like it needs to happen. And both of them, it's like, man, I, I I love the set it and forget it prayer because what you're saying is, all right, God, I'm telling you my desires, and then I think when we when we when we forget it, we walk away knowing it's going to happen. Right. With the confidence to know that God's going to deliver. Right. He is going to give me what he promised me. Now, here's the reality. Sometimes. And you said this earlier, there's a difference between our wants and, you know, you know what our needs are. A desire. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. And desire, our desires. Yeah. So I think that's the hard part when I'm walking around thinking, OK, I need this and I pray and God's not delivering. So maybe I'm like, well, maybe he didn't hear me. Maybe I'll say it again because I really need this instead of saying, okay, God, I trust you with it. I mean, the hardest prayer I've had to pray when I say, okay, God, you know, this is something I need and I pray and I don't hear nothing. But it's not that I don't hear nothing and I don't hear anything. What I hear is God saying, that's not a need, bro. That's a want. And when I hear that message, I'm like, okay, that's not what I want to hear from you. But I thank you for it because now he's shaping my heart. He's allowing me to see things in myself. So I, I think like when we talk about the prayer and, and praying and especially that repetition prayer, I think, you know, as we as we pray, once again, we always say prayer is a conversation. And if we've been in are we all okay. been in that in that so called conversation, that's my air quotes, where only one person is talking. <laughs> you know? Yeah. So yeah. that's what we want to avoid. Yeah. 
And, and that's funny because, because again, you get into you get into ver- to, to, to verse eight where it says, "Be not ye therefore like unto them, for the Father knoweth what things ye have need of before ye ask." And, 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 and that right there, what you just said, it goes right into that, Jason. Because I, I think a lot of times, what we don't understand, I think what we don't understand is that God knows what we need. We are, before we can even ask. He knows exactly what we need, and 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 just like what you were saying, um, you know, he knows. And when you get into a situation where it's just one person talking, who are you trying to convince? <laughs> you trying to convince yourself or him? And and, and, I, and I think that I think that um, um, when we look at scripture, um, uh, I think that we'll, we'll see uh, uh, that. What he what God means by that because in in the book of Romans, uh, Romans eight twenty six it basically says uh, we know not what we should pray for as we ought. Right? Listen, God understands what you need. He He knows all of your needs. You may be praying, Jason. You may think your issue is money. Yeah, because I don't want to caution people when you start praying for things. Okay, you may have some misconceptions when you, if you don't have a great relationship with Christ right now, you start to develop that relationship and you start praying for things. I'm gonna tell you this right now, and this is something uh, uh, I served as a deacon, man, all the way back 1996. I was ordained as a deacon in my church, and when you start praying for things, here it is. Listen, you start asking God to test you. I believe that. <laughs> I, I, that was something that that I myself just had reconciled myself to, and it was due to experience. I started praying for a better life, and in praying for a better life, I prayed for, okay, Lord, I'm leaving the military. Uh, I need a good job. Well, guess what? I wasn't going to get no good job uh, uh, doing what I did in the military. I could, but I needed here it is. To do that job in the civilian world, I needed a degree, a piece of paper. So what did I just ask for? I just asked to go enroll in school. And when I enrolled in school, I had a daughter and I had a wife, and it was me, right? Uh, I already got bills, right? So I just added another bill. I know the military gives me X amount of dollars. But until the checks get here from the military, I got to pay the bills, right? So I just asked, asked for that just ensured that not only was I going to get out of the military, but I was going to have to have a decent job when I got out, or I was going to have to work extra hours on a crummy job. So I just added to work. Listen, I'm saying that God will put us through some things, these tests, these, 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 these trials, so that when we get to what he knew that we were really asking for, but we weren't, uh, 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 how does that say, we weren't, mature enough to look at the total situation and ask for all of this. He's saying, Cedric, you say you want a, uh, uh, you want a good paying job. Well, in order for me to get you here, I'm going to need you to have a better education. So I'm gonna, so as you try to get this education, Cedric, you're going to have to develop some discipline. You're going to have to learn to control your finances. You, you're going to have to learn to here it is, manage your time better. You see, all of these to get to a desire, and my main desire was to be a great family, but I was going to have to go through all of that learning to get to where I wanted to be. But God already knows his wisdom is so infinite that he knows everything that you need along the way, and he gives it to you, but we're not always mature enough to see it going in. And so that's another thing about prayer. God knows exactly what we need before we ask. And, and and we may ask for something. God knows if we don't need it, sometimes that prayer doesn't, it just doesn't happen. You know, and there are times when, when God will allow you to have a thing that you think you really want. And, and, and if it's not for you, it ain't saying. He may allow it to visit, but it's not saying. So, so it's important to pray and be earnest in our prayers because we need prayer. I don't. We we can't get through life without it. And, and I th- I think that that. Oh, go ahead, Jason. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, to, to when you talk about prayer and, and, and like I always say, it's just a conversation with God. You know, I'll tell you, I can't go without talking to God every day because not just for the comfort and convenience, not to tell him how great he is, but sometimes this will stop me from being stupid because I'm going to go out there and try to do that. Like you, like you just talked about what I think I want to do, but in reality, that's not what I need to do. Right. And, and it, it, it's, 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 it goes back to uh, things that the the, um, the concept that was out there. You remember those bracelets that said WWJD? What would Jesus do? And my answer was always the yeah, same: whatever yeah. God tells them. And that's where we have to be, and, you know. And when we can't hear what God's <laughs> telling like us, if we're not if we're not talking to Him, right? I ain't never heard somebody be told something to do unless they're talking to that person, right? So, so I think it's listen. important, <laughs> yeah, you know, that talking and that listening, you know. So, um, yeah, I don't think we can go anywhere without prayer. And anybody who tells me they can't, yeah. I'm like, well, you're a better man than me because I can't, you know. And I gotta give them props for that. And, and, and that's the funny part because, you know, one of the things about prayer. Is this right here? And 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 you said it a couple of times tonight. Is that that prayer is going to help us develop our relationship with Christ? You know, a lot of people who don't believe they think, ah, you're just talking. Ah, uh, yeah, whatever. Ain't nobody hearing you. Uh, and nobody's talking to you. And then they ask us when we do something that's profound to them. They say, well, why did you do that? And you say, you know, ah. Uh, you know, it, I felt that God wanted me to do this for this reason. Then I said, but you couldn't have known that that something just happened to me and you bring the thing that I need the most. It wasn't me. It was God. I don't give me credit. But how did we learn to do that? And and I think we learn to do that through our relationship with Christ. One of the things that, that again, we have to do when we pray is the focus should not be on, let's say, an item or a thing a want or even a a desire. The focus for me when I pray, Jason, is a better relationship with Christ. All I really want is relationship. Uh, And and I believe that's what God wants from us, relationship. And so having said that, we're talking about the Lord's Prayer. When we jump on down to the Scripture, we we find that Jesus gave us a model. Am I right? Yep. It says in Scripture, he says, when ye pray, say, right? Say. He gave us a model prayer. I'm going to be honest with you. All those years I was saying uh, what we refer to as the Lord's Prayer, Jason, I was just reciting a poem. We we had these little wooden plaques in our house that our mom, back in the 70s, they used to have these little wooden plaques, and they would, they looked like street signs, the way they would make them up. And we had some in our house that and one of them was the Lord's Prayer. My mom had them in the hallway, in our bedroom, in the kitchen. They were throughout our house. I just thought I was learning a poem. I didn't even, I didn't know that that, that was scripture. I didn't know that I was actually learning scripture at that age. But I tell you what, that, that uh, ignorance is just not knowing. But that innocent little kid was following the blueprint that, that Jesus had gave the disciples for prayer. And it's been passed on to all of us. Uh, I, I mean, I think that's amazing, personally. Um, I, I think it's amazing that, that we, we, we can teach our kids in that way. And, you know, in our community, the African-American community, uh, you know, slaves, they taught their kids through song. Am I right? Right. And, and, and so, right, right. And, 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 and so the model prayer, uh, uh, Again, we should start, if you don't know how to pray, if you've never really prayed before, you've never been serious about it, I tell you, it's hard to recite this prayer, to read these words, and and, and, and allow them to permeate your mind. It's hard to read them and them not take over some sort of spiritual direction for you. It will lead you somewhere, right? Because one of the things that when, when you first read this, this is our Father which are in heaven, right? And 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 and, and you got to think again. Back in this time, Father was used uh, uh, as a reference to God. 
right, in the Old Testament. Father was used as a reference to God only, uh, I think the, the text that I read was 15 times, right? Yeah, very so this, only a handful of times. Yes. Yeah. 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 And, and, and so this, this was powerful for them, right? And so they're beginning their prayer with Father, our Father, which are in heaven. And 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 I I think that's a big deal. I think when we start the prayer, when we start praying like that, we're admitting, Father, you. We're looking up. We're bowing down to you. See, here's the funny thing. It's a part just hit me, Jason. Um, you ever watch those shows where they try, like they'll have somebody who doesn't believe in God, not necessarily mm-hmm. an atheist, but just doesn't believe in God. And right. one of the things I heard a guy saying is that. Well, if you notice in Christianity, you always got your hands together. You always got your head down. You're in a slave position. You're bowing down. And I'm saying, you're just admitting that you're not the strongest one in the room, and you're bowing down to to your father. I I don't see a problem with that. Do you have a problem with that? No, no, no. And I and you know, um, I, I used to 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 your point when I first started doing the Lord's Prayer. It was just something that we were just told to remember. And here, here in my adult life, I had somebody break down the Lord's Prayer, and I've done, and I, and, and I look to try to break it down myself. And I don't think we realize that first statement how powerful it really yeah. is, right? When we say "Our Father," you know, yes, there, there is a, there is a sign of submission where you're saying like. You know, in that re- in that relationship with our own earthly father, he is the authority. He is our head. He is someone we look at. But yeah. going further than that, he's somebody that we emulate. He's someone that we model after. He's someone that we look to for protection, for providing, for 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 prayer, for promoting. You know, that's what the father is. And when you start the prayer off saying "Our Father," what you're saying is like you're not right. just this God that lives in heaven. And, and looks down upon me, who may sprinkle some breath on me, you know, what What father parents from afar? None of us, right? A good father is going gonna, is gonna to be there next to you, you know, not just to celebrate your successes, but to cry with you in, 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 your, in, your, in your hurts and your pains. So when we, when we start our prayer off saying, our father, we're talking about a deep, intimate, close relationship a relationship that yes. becomes a foundation of everything that you built off of. You know, I, I always t- I always say this. I, I think the foundation of the family, the foundation of identity comes from the father. You know, and they say this. Identity That's right. comes from paternity. It comes from the father. So what you're talking about when mm. you say our father, you're talking about the foundation of an intimate relationship that everything is built off of. So to start the prayer out like that, it, it, it doesn't surprise me because that's the foundation of everything that comes after that. You know, that word father and everything that it connotates and everything that it means, not just from a, um, not just from a relational perspective, uh, but also just from the, the physical perspective and, and what that, and what that really entails. So, yeah, I love the fact to start off our father, you know, and, and, it, and from there, it just keeps going. I mean, I mean, and you said it all because we start out with praise. We go into to this phase where we're submitting to him and his authority. And then check this out. Once we praise God, we submit, we admit, we, 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 are, we, we admit that we are under his submission. Here it is. And then in the scripture, when you get, by the time you get to, 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 to the us part, we're petitioning God, you know, our, man. It, 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 and for me, that's that's the big deal for me, right? You know, give us this day, give us this day. You know, you are our father. I'm following thy rules. You are, you know what I'm saying? And, and a lot of people don't understand that. And 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 then also, I believe in prayer and and, and what 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 the Lord prayer does um is is when you by the time you get to the second um uh, uh second and third time that, that where it says us you know we're talking about forgiveness we're talking about forgiveness jason you know do, do you ever pray sometimes and i know i have to do this but do you ever pray sometimes that 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 god just forgive you or give you the strength to forgive someone else see, see I, I, 
I think that's, oh, yeah. that's what we need. Yeah, and I and I think we, and I think we, we, we mm-hmm. yeah we we we, we kind of as we as we say the prayer we we almost go past that really quick, but but I think when we really think about that and understand what that really means, what that where, where that where that asking for forgiveness comes from, it comes from a place of submission where you said like I've done something that may be displeasing to you, and. We've already got God's forgiveness, but it's tell, it's us in our hearts saying like, "Hey, I just want you to know, please forgive me." Is you know, it is that part where you are God and I'm just and, and I'm just Jason, and not that I'm lowly or I'm, I'm not important, but you are so high that I want to make sure that I keep myself in you know in 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 pleasing to you, right? You know, you know, it, it goes beyond. Just hey, I know you're going always going to love me, but because I love you so much, my only response is to work to please you, and and I, I love that fact where I can go to my father and ask him for forgiveness, you know, not just because I he's going to grant it, but because I get to, I get a chance to stay in graces with him, and, and it just reminds me, you know, unlike some of our earthly fathers, how his graces just abound, you know, so. Although we're we're asking for something that's already given, it's not really to get it. It's just in recognition of, man, look at this great gift I already gotten. You know, so so when we when we say like, you know, um, you know, just when we ask that prayer and we and we talk about that forgiveness piece and we talk about the strength to forgive yeah. others, you know, that is that is a supernatural strength, you know, because in our flesh, yeah. you know, we 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 take record. Right, we we take notes. We we, we yeah, got a history a and a ledger <laughs> of I owe this person this, I owe that person that, oh that person I owe him double that. You know, we got that ledger in That's our head, right. and it, it 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 sometimes takes a supernatural move in us to to for us to let that go. And and a lot of times, you know, we we when we, when we say that part, people think that man, if I forgive and I ask for forgiveness, I'm giving them permission to run up, run me over. Or, or I'm making myself weak. No, what you're actually really doing is step into some strength because now you have the strength to kind of define your circumstance because when you hold on to that unforgiveness, all you're really doing is shaping your own circumstances and you're making your circumstances worse for you. That person has gotten on with their life half the time, and, you know, they, they're not even bothered by what they did to you. But you've given them power over your life, over your circumstances. People don't understand how forgiveness is and how important it is. And because it's sometimes it, it does traumatize us and hurt us so bad, it takes a supernatural effort to, to, to be able to let that go. So when we get to you know, not just ask for our own forgiveness, but for the power to yeah. forgive, you see also how our Father is working in in our in, in in beneficial us to benefit us and everything that he does and everything that he wants for us. So man, that like every part of this prayer is so powerful when you just look at it and understand what it really means. And and and, and that's the beauty in it because by the time we get to but by, by the time we get to where you are on forgiveness, the very next thing after after we ask for forgiveness, right? Um, for if ye forgive me in the trespass, well, I'm, I'm going to go back up where it says, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. The very next thing he says, and lead us not into tempta- temptation, but deliver us from evil. <laughs> so what we said was, God, you know, for, forgive me, forgive us as we forgive our debtors. Look, I'm asking you for forgiveness. So. I want to be able to forgive the people who I feel owe me, just like you just said, Jason. But then we start asking for direction after that, and the direction comes. We're asking him, help me to overcome my temptations, right? Help me to get through the trials that I'm going through. Help me to endure the things that are going on around me. Because, listen, this is why this is important. This is important because it's going to shape our growth in Christ. Don't you think all of this together so far, what what we're praying in the Lord's Prayer, it helps to give us direction. It helps to shape the entire relationship. And also, we're we're letting it go. We're giving it to God, right? We're saying, thy will be done. Mm. Right? Say that again. 
right? Right. See, 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 I always, and, and I think you said something like this, um, we can always pray that God remove a struggle, a trial from our path or, or take or take that whole trial away. But but I, I think it was you, Jason, that said to me one time, well, I don't always just ask him to remove me. I ask him to help me get through it. When you go through something tough, when you go through bad times, right, when, when you have to go through it, you got to understand that, that your faith, you having strong faith, it, it, it comes with practice. You don't just wake up one day and just have it. It comes with practice. And what I mean by that is if, 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 if you wreck your bike and you say, oh, Lord, I can't get through this without you, and you depend on God and, and you get through that accident and another and whatever trial comes your way, it always seems that you get through it. And, and, and you always get through it. And while you're going through it, all you're doing is praying to God. You're not trying to do every single thing yourself. You're doing what you're supposed to do, but you're allowing God to control those things that are not under your control. It builds a bigger relationship. And so guidance, when we follow God's guidance, he offers us a bit of protection, right? And right. I believe it. I, I truly believe it. The scripture says it, so I believe it, okay? You know, I you can take into account that there are some sort of protections promised to you. And and, and, it, and what does that lead to, man? And nothing like being on the right track, right? Man, now we can worship. That we can, you, you know, that we can. Jason, I'll tell you something that happened. Something happened. I have a friend who he had been on this woe with me kick, this woe with me. And I'd be like, it's going to be all right. You know, you just got to, you got to endure it. But that wasn't good enough. The minute something good happened, the minute mm-hmm. something good happened, oh man, he was. This particular friend was running up and down the streets praising God. Did you really believe in God in the beginning? Listen, what God has for you is for you. You may as well remain calm and dependent upon Him as He delivers what He has for you. You know, you, you got to go. You gonna have to go through some storms. Why be miserable going through the storms? The outcome is for 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 certain situations, the outcome is going to remain basically the same. It, it, and here's what I mean, Jason. Here's what I mean. Um, you're trying to get into a school. You've taken the test. Right. All you're waiting for is the test results. You've done all you can do. You studied. You went. You took the test. You 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 had your mind focused on the test. Does it do you any good to run around worrying about the test results? Nope. It, it, it doesn't profit you. It doesn't add one day to your life. And, and, and so that's what I'm saying. So, you know, for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Already, you, already you're, you're basically saying, okay, God, you already fixed it. I'm good. I'm good. And and, 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 and and now it's kind of as you pray this and it's again, this really gets into your heart, your mind and your soul. And you pray this earnestly. I don't care if you pray it ten times a day, however you want to pray, you pray. Your connection with Christ, I believe, grows at that point. You're nurturing that re- relationship. Now, 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 and now here's the other key I have. Uh, the, the other point is, 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 is about us as believers, right? Is, mm-hmm. is that um, um, I, I, I'm, I'm trying to I'm trying to get the right word here. Listen, there's a difference between corporate prayer and our private prayer. Do, do you right. agree? Yep, yep. There's a difference between corporate prayer and our private prayer. Both should be earnest, right? Mm-hmm. Both should be earnest, but one is done in secret. One is done in your prayer closet. It's not with everybody else. Because think about this, where it says, um, give us this day our daily bread. See, there's an 
interconnectedness of believers at that point. Right? And right. and that means that, that, that we, we, we ought to have a concern one to another and we ought to have concern for each other's needs. You see, when when you become a believer, all right, to join together, we want to be together. You, you know, basically we all come together one body, right, and, and in prayer, in our corporate prayer. But but there is a time when you go home where you you want you have to be in private. The Lord's prayer works for us in both our public lives and our private prayer lives. If you don't know anything else to pray, if you're in the middle, if you're in the church, if you're in the, a gathering and you want to pray the Lord's prayer, pray the Lord's prayer. Because this prayer, this is a model for all of us for corporate prayer and for private prayer. Now, I don't know if that made sense. I don't know if I made my point on that, but 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 yeah, I will tell you this. It, yeah, awesome. Because I, I will tell you this: when you pray in private, and, and I'll give you an example. Ancestors. Intercessory prayer at church. Intercessors generally go in and they're praying. It's a private. Yes, sometimes there are, there's 10, 15 of them. It's more of a corporate setting for them, but it's a very small group. They're praying. You may have a prayer group, small group. You're praying. But listen, you pray in private, and God rewards openly. Does that make sense? Yep. They pray for, like, the church and the things of the church and and in the end, God rewards yes. that. Yes. Yes. And that's important. And, and, and my thing is this right here. It's important because, you know, we, we, we have to know, um, we have to know and understand prayer. We have to, you know, sometimes you just have to know what you're asking for. You have to know, you know, the, the Lord's Prayer is a model prayer. Now, I would recommend that we all learn this prayer and be able to kind of break it down in our own minds and our own hearts and accept what God is saying so that when you do pray out in the open, if you're praying for a specific thing, you still can include these elements or you can just use that prayer because it's important. And what this is about, I'm going to be honest, this is not about having fancy words or being able to quote scripture at this point. This is about developing your relationship with Christ. And, and, and that's what that's what we ought to be doing right now, developing our relationship with God. So, um, uh, with that said, I'm gonna let you close us out, Jason. I'm, I'm gonna let you close us out with something because you know, it's a thought that you have, but but that's really important. Prayer is really important. The Lord's prayer, if that's the only prayer that you know, pray it. Yeah, because because like we talked yeah. about, it's not the words that we utter. It's not the 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 fanciness of the vernacular that you use. It's not how 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 long you pray, how loud you pray. It's about the heart behind it. And it's about a conversation. And if you if we don't leave with anything else, just know prayer is simply as talking to God. And it doesn't have to be, you know, this big elaborate thing. You know, uh just like we're a father, right? If our kids just want to come talk to us while we're doing simple chores in the middle of anything, we want that relationship, and he wants that relationship for us. So then when you start the prayer, just start by talking, right? And as you and, then, and as you progress and you start using some of these models of prayer, don't just read them as a word, but look at them as a way like, okay, God, give me greater understanding as we talk, as, as, as I share with you my heart, and, and, and we just talk about things and, we, and we're talking through things. You know, I, I, you know, just just pray and just talk and just know that's what it is. It's just a conversation, and he loves to hear from us, and he'll love to hear anything we have to say to him. And 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 that's the beauty right there, Jason. Thank you, man. I I I want I, I hope and pray that we we help somebody tonight. I hope I wasn't too confusing, but I'm I'm so excited and so amped up because I have been praying um, just for a number of things, and God is so awesome. Um, I always funny. I always prayed to be a good father, a good enough father. And you know, when I talk to my kids today, 
and to hear them talk, you know, I think God did that for me. He gave me that desire. He gave me the desire of my heart when it came to my children, when it comes to my children. Uh, tons and tons of struggles. Some I'll never talk about, but tons of struggles. But you know what? My commitment was to always be there, and I think God has really uh, uh, blessed the, uh, our relationship. And, and I want to encourage anybody who feels that they're having a tough time, you hang in there and you do what God told you to do. And I'm telling you, at the end, watch God work. It may not feel good, may not look good, may not smell good, may not even taste good, but I'm telling you, at the end, just like we say, uh, 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 God the Father, you know what? I'm telling you, he is going to bless. And it's important. That is the reason it is so important to have a relationship for yourself with Christ. That is the reason you should have a relationship with God right there, right? Because you two will share some really intimate uh, uh, trials. And I tell you, nobody better to have on your team than God, okay? So with that being said, y'all know how we do it this time. You know, find something you love. <laughs> you embrace it. And you chase it. And that is your relentless pursuit. This minister Cedric, I'm signing off tonight. I want to say God bless you, and God thank you, each and every one of you. Have a wonderful evening. Sister Kimmy.